go into the world and tell every man that you meet there is a man on the cross a catholic take what you need to know right now a bold synthesis of inspiration and information keeping you up to date on the news and issues from a courageous catholic perspective a Catholic Take with Joe McLean starts now. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and it's great to be on with you. The Padre Pio movie, you've heard me criticize it, but is it just warmed over socialist leftovers with a dash of Padre Pio to it? We're going to find out firsthand. No more secondhand information today. Jordan Pacheco of the Glad Trad podcast, also of St. Augustine Institute fame, Watched the film last night. He's going to give us his take today on the program. I haven't talked to him since. I don't know what he's going to say. Maybe he's going to say, Joe, you got this all wrong. It's amazing. Or maybe I got it right. We're going to find out. 15 past the hour. Do join us if you can. But I got to tell you, a lot of people are saying don't watch it. I'm just just putting it out there. that Everybody so far I've seen says no bueno. At any rate, at 30 past the hour... Austin Kelly, executive producer for the Knights of the Cross television series. Did you know there is a crowdfunded television series that is faithful to history, faithful to uh, Catholic teaching, is uh, actually already in play? Did you even know this? Well, I'm excited to share this with you. Austin Kelly is going to be on at 30 past the hour to tell you all about this series. So it's going to be a jam-packed show. Sit back and relax. Do share us with a friend. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come. Before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and now your saint of the day. Saint Paul of Constantinople, pray for us. Paul was born in Thessalonica, but was a member of the clergy in Constantinople when the dying Bishop Alexander chose him as his successor. Paul was an excellent preacher and fiercely defended the Catholic faith against the Arians. The heretics succeeded in exiling Paul to the West on false charges. He spent this time under the protection of the Western Emperor Constans, son of Constantine, and was aided by Saints Athanasius and Maximinus. Eventually, St. Paul returned to Constantinople and regained his see upon the death of the Arian usurper. But after further unrest, the Eastern Emperor and Arian sympathizer Constantius, brother of Constans, had Paul banished again until the bishop was allowed to return thanks to the influence of Constans. Upon the Western Emperor's assassination, Paul was deposed yet again, smuggled out of Constantinople by the Arians to avoid interference from Paul's loyal flock. This time, Paul's heretical enemies imprisoned him in Armenia and left him to starve to death. When they found the bishop still alive after many days without food, he was strangled to death in the year 350. Despite his loyalty to his flock and their love for him in return, He had spent most of his time as bishop, exiled from his see. His relics now rest in the Church of St. Lawrence in Venice. St. Paul of Constantinople, pray for us. And now your headline news. Breitbart reports CIA was warned of Ukraine plan to sabotage Nord Stream Pipeline. The Biden administration was forewarned through the CIA that the Ukraine military planned a covert attack on the undersea Nord Stream pipeline a full three months before the sabotage took place. An elite six-man team of divers who reported directly to the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces was responsible. They used a chartered yacht gained through fake uh, passports and left a port in Germany before planting explosives that severed the pipelines. The report compiled by Shane Harris and Saud Mekhenet states, quote, details about the plan, which have not yet been previously reported, were collected by a European intelligence service and shared with the CIA in June of 2022. They provide some of the most specific evidence to date linking the government of Ukraine to the eventual attack in the Baltic Sea, close quote. 
CNA reports Oklahoma board approves the first Catholic charter school in the country. The move will allow public funds to pay the tuition of children attending an online Catholic school run by the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City and the Diocese of Tulsa. The statewide virtual charter school board voted 3-2 to two to approve St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School in a three-hour-long meeting. The yes votes included a new member who was appointed by Republican Governor Kevin Stitt on Friday. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that states cannot discriminate against religiously affiliated schools in its voucher programs. However, the constitutionality of charter schools run by religious institutions has not yet come up. Life Site News reports Pope Francis hospitalized for urgent abdominal surgery. Pope Francis has been hospitalized this morning for a scheduled but urgent surgery due to an incarcerated incisional hernia, which will require a stay for several days in the hospital. The Vatican made the announcement June 7th with Director of the Holy See Press Office, Matteo Bruni, stating that following the customary weekly general audience, Pope Francis, quote, went to Gamelli University Polyclinic, where in the early afternoon he will undergo a laparotomy and abdominal wall plastic surgery with prosthesis under general anesthesia. The pontiff made a visit of some hours to the Gamelli Hospital yesterday, although unannounced and unacknowledged by the Holy See Office, Prior to the event, it is understood to be partly as a result to those tests yesterday that today's surgery has come about. And those are your headline news. Let's pray for the Pope's recovery. The gospel today comes to us from Mark chapter 12, verses 18 through 27. Some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants. And the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection... When they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pseudo Jerome would say, But in a mystical sense, what can this woman, leaving no seed of seven brothers, and last of all dying, mean, except the Jewish synagogue, deserted by the sevenfold spirit, which filled those seven patriarchs who did not leave to her the seed of Abraham, that is, Jesus Christ. For although a son was born to them, nevertheless he was given to us Gentiles. This woman was dead to Christ, nor shall she be joined in the resurrection to any patriarch of the seven, For by the number seven is meant the whole company of the faithful. Thus, it is said counterwise by Isaiah, seven women shall take hold of one man. That is, the seven churches, which the Lord loves, reproves, and chastises, adores him with one faith. Close quote, pseudo Jerome. What does pseudo Jerome mean? Do you even know? It means this is a writing around the time of Jerome, St. Jerome. So it was attributed to him, but they're not sure that he actually ever wrote it. So they're not sure of the exact author. So they call it pseudo Jerome. You'll see that with like pseudo Christendom, for, uh, for instance. There's others. A Catholic commentary on Holy Scripture would say this is the first mention of the Sadducees in Mark. They were the section of the Jewish nation who had been influenced most deeply by Hellenism. Members of the sect belonged mainly to the priestly families and upper classes. 
Uh, as uh, see, for instance, Acts 5, under the Romans, they gave ready submission to the established uh, order. One of their number was regularly selected as high priest at this time in religious matters. The Sadducees say there is no resurrection, nor angel, nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. They also differed from the Pharisees in their refusal to attach importance to the traditions of the ancients. According to some of the fathers, they accepted only the first five books of the Old Testament, which is why the Lord throws a dig at them when he says, have you not read in the book of Moses? It's a dig because they only accept those first five books. They were throwing, uh, Jesus, our Lord, was throwing digs. You got, just let that set in for a second. He's throwing digs. The, uh, the commentary goes on to say they misconceive the manner of, ex- of existence of those who rise from the dead. <clears throat> Their question is futile. Because it supposes that life in the resurrection is merely a prolongation of the conditions of the present life. But the power of God will so transform the risen body that they cannot die anymore. For they will be like angels and are sons of God, being children of the resurrection. Marriage is an earthly institution for the, con- for the conservation of the human race. In the resurrection, however, men will be immortal and like angels in their freedom from preoccupation with marriage and other temporal matters. So there you go, close quote. A Catholic commentary on Holy Scripture. Marriage is for this journey here on this earth. When we die, we are neither married nor given in marriage. In fact, we are married. We are married to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the spouse. And we see the new church coming down from heaven. A new creation, if you will. Let us ponder this today. Praise be to God. Let us give ourselves completely over to this only begotten. We'll be right back. Padre Pio is coming up next. Speed of Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Praise be to God. Coming up at 30 past the hour, we're going to have the executive producer of a television series called Knights of the Cross. And uh, it's put out by the Christian Channel and Real Crusade History Channel. And uh, the first episode is already available. Uh, we're going to link to it in our show notes. If you go to the station, the cross.com forward slash ACT, you'll see the show notes posted after every show. Jake, the producer, does a great job with that. So we'll put a link to this there. But uh, they're producing an entire series of it. We're going to get to know them, what they're doing, why they're doing it, what it all costs, all the details coming up. At 30 past the hour. Do join us if you can. Praise be to God. But jumping on the line right now is my good friend Jordan Pacheco. He is with the Glad Trad podcast. He's also of St. Augustine Institute fame. And I understand that he has watched the St. Padre Pio film firsthand. And we're about to get our first impressions of the film from a from someone who's actually seen the film instead of secondhand information. Good morning to you, Jordan Pacheco. <laughs> Hey, good morning, Joe. Thanks so much for having me on. Praise be to God. Glad for your time today. It's good. Good to see you again. You're looking great. Praise be to God. So let me ask oh, you, you, did you watch did you watch the film? Have you seen it? I, I just finished it last night. You just finished it last night. Now, I have a take on this. I've expressed my take already okay. on this show a few times. Uh, so I don't want to share with you that I think this is a uh, warmed over socialist, you know, uh, with a, just a dash of P.O., I want your opinion. Uh, what is the, what was your first take on this film? What was your general impression before specifics? Man, well, yeah. So okay, so well, what is the point of getting into it if you've uh, already summed up exactly what I thought? This movie is <laughs> fifteen seconds of Padre Pio, and eighty five percent of this uh, movie about these socialists in the first free election in Italy, apparently in the nineteen twenties, and. Uh, one of the biggest like mar- mar- I say it's like one of the biggest like marketing like switcheroos I've seen in a movie in a really really long time. But it's not a very good movie, to be honest with you. It's not really good on a lot of levels. I don't understand, Jordan. His face is on the poster. Okay, Saint Padre Pio's oh face God. is on the actual poster. If you go and look at the poster, Jordan, have you? Maybe you didn't see the yeah, poster. Maybe that is. was your issue. Is you watched the film, but you didn't see the poster that they put out in the marquee. I okay, his, it's it's Shia it LaBeouf as Padre Pio. That's the whole movie. That's the entire thing. I don't know what you're talking about. 
And let me tell you, if this is what causes conversion to the Catholic faith in his scenes that he was in it, I could get it. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm it's it's like it's completely a waste of Padre Pio. If Padre Pio wasn't in the movie, the plot would still happen, the timeline would still move through. It it doesn't make any sense for him to really be in this because it's not really about him. It doesn't do anything in the movie qua the movie. So there's just these little vignettes that happen that are way more interesting than the sort of real A story, which is about these like socialists and some of these guys are veterans coming home from World War One. Um, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it's like really, really confusing. It's, it's a very mismatched movie. And that's why even the controversy around it, I think, isn't even worth it. So there's my quick little thing. It's not even worth it. Not even the controversy. So, all right. Uh, let's talk about Shia LaBeouf. Uh, Shia LaBeouf, okay. he made splashes last year, something I talked about on my show and uh, got a lot of traction over. He had that great conversation between him and Bishop Robert Barron talking about the, how this movie helped to bring him into the church. He's in fact, we found out uh, last week that he's going to be received into the church here in just a few months. I think it's September. Praise be to God. Bishop Baird may bring him in. And we love that. That's amazing. That's good news. But I was upset and looking at some of the performance factors of him uh, portraying uh, Padre Pio. The accent was a problem with me. Um, number one, I couldn't not see Shia LaBeouf. I kept seeing Shia LaBeouf instead of Padre Pio. You know, so I wasn't being lost in that character. Number one. And number two... They released a piece of footage of him using the F-bomb as Padre Pio, which is not something that was historically accurate. I actually verified that through someone who had a great close connection to Padre Pio uh, directly. So what were your thoughts on Shia LaBeouf's performance here? Yeah. So I would say that if uh, first off, uh, this is an Italian film and it shows, which is usually my first negative. Uh, I like Shia's performance. I think he looks the part. I think that he meant the part. I, I'm with you on the accent. And as for the F-bomb, listen, if you watch the movie, one thing about this, and, and I've seen this in other movies too, is that period pieces take periodic language and especially ones about saints. So even before we get to the saint aspect, a huge problem with it is that a lot of the movie uh, has relatively modern feeling language, despite the fact that this is early 1920s Italy. And that goes on for this particular case of the F-bomb. Now, obviously, you've historically verified it. This was my first question. When I saw that clip, uh, Padre Pio, as far as anyone could tell, didn't use the F-bomb. And there was absolutely no call for it in this particular scene. It didn't. That wasn't the thing that I was like, oh, that's it. I'm turning this thing off for me personally, because in the context of the entirety of the scene, I was like, okay, this is completely unnecessary. And I know as a filmmaker, this is completely unnecessary. But like, I'm, I'm still going to stay in this movie just to kind of happen. Um, but it was actually really disappointing because I think it once again just highlighted that if you watch this movie trying to figure out a bit about Padre Pio, you're not going to get much out of it. There's far better just straight documentaries about him and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of character understandings of who Padre Pio was just get completely obscured by by plot points and also what I think are are easy directing errors. And that's one of them where if if uh, Shia was just too into the role and said uh, the word there, this seems like something I would have done a cut on and be like, hey, listen, let's let's dial it back here. And this is why, um, which is really disappointing, because I think there was a, there it could have been a decent movie and it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So are you are you confirming then that they actually did use the f bomb in the film yes yes there's oh, there's a couple wow. there's a there's a few yeah there's a few f bombs there's one out of padre pio there's a few a funny line to say i never thought i'd say that in my life <laughs> <laughs> wow i thought for sure that was just one of the takes shia did they recorded it but they're going to cut it there's no way that's going to make the film but that actually made the film this blows my mind i can't believe they would include this what, what were they thinking do you think yeah, I thought so too. Because if you watch the scene, I'm like, there's, I mean, easy in the scene, I'm like, there's absolutely no reason. And it comes out of nowhere and doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like, it's just one of the things I was like, okay, this just must be like a bad take that if you were in a good director mode, if you were actually trying to make a decent Padre PF film, you'd be like, no, 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 that's too far. We have to dial it back and let me explain the context. Um, and it's really disappointing because there are a couple of Padre PO scenes, I think, which are actually. Uh, pretty good it does there are a couple scenes that talk about his torment and there's some stuff i think they take a little too far in the torment Mm -hmm. scenes but i see like the colonel but again i think that this is just kind of like a shock it's not even a shock value movie i should say i think it's just like they threw two ideas together without actually giving reverence to one of the ideas in particular and as a result it comes across as a bad saint movie and comes across as just a bad movie in general like it's just kind of a mediocre indie film 
Wow. This is uh, this is sad because I I thought Shia has a great look. He looks he has a very similar look to Padre mm-hmm. Pio as a young man. And when uh, when when I was coming into the church and uh, Padre Pio became my patron saint, I began to read his letters that he wrote to his spiritual directors from that period of his life, from that period of his priesthood. Yeah. So I was very excited about this. The, do you think it was? Do you think it's possible that Shia LaBeouf could? Um, could step up that acting. Do you think he could have pulled off an Italian accent to sort of help sell the character? Do you think he could have done that? I, I remember watching a conversation with Shia about this last year where he said he felt that would have been a distraction to his acting and being present in that moment, so they agreed not to do mm. it. But I disagree. I think it would have been way better if they had. What would be your thoughts if he had done an Italian accent? Yeah, I mean, this is almost like the same sort of of commentary when you come with something like The Chosen, right? It's like you have to pick a lane on if you're going to use accents or not. So this film has predominantly Italian actors who obviously can speak Italian who are using English. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't work. With Shia's case, I think it took me a little bit of buy-in. I would have loved to see him with an accent. And obviously, um, you see him in Fury, right, where he uses a more Southern accent and it works. Mm -hmm. Shia is a method actor for better or for worse. And so I think that him using an Italian accent would have been better for sure. He definitely looks the part. He should have sounded the part too. But once again, mm-hmm. I think that this is, this is a directing sort of decision as well. And um, they didn't do it. Like a lot of, of, I think natural inclinations on this film were wasted because this film was wasted. So it's kind of disappointing, but I would have been fine with him keeping his American accent. Uh, had the content of the film just been better i would have been like that's the least of my concerns here cinematography sound design look and feel overall how about those things yeah oh my gosh okay so i thought judging from i'll be honest judging from the trailer stuff i thought i wasn't gonna like the cinematography and of course that's what i'm trained in naturally but i did like the cinematography it's it's very uh it's natural and a little grungy and i think it's it fits the time and the mood really really well so i like the cinematography i like the slight handheld camera feel there are some there are some editing decisions in particular that don't work they have a lot of fake slow-mo which i hate i can feel the warp stabilizer on some shots and this is gonna sound technical to some of your people i'm sorry but like that's a problem <laughs> with some indie films i'm just like ah and and as for so the 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 music i think ah sometimes it worked this is one of those films i think would have done a lot better with less score instead of giving me some dr- Matt Edge in some moments, and unfortunately, sometimes it would hit just to kind of prove a point. But like, like the little socialist workers in the field or something, and I was like, uh, "This isn't like I know what you're trying to do, and it's just not really working that well." Um, and again, I think that the biggest errors came with just directorial ideas, just how the script was written and how the lines were delivered in some cases made you not feel like this was a period piece about a saint or about a time period or something like that, and that really, really detracted from the film. And then we get mm-hmm. to this end there's a big climax scene um, around the election. And I listen, I, again, I love indie filmmaking. I am an indie filmmaker when I, you know, but I got to tell you uh, when you don't have the effects or the budget or the movement for something, you shouldn't do it. And I think that it came really, really distracting towards the end, the couple of ideas. Um, And then of course there was, I'm sure we'll talk about like the scene people talk about, which is like, was our lady blasphemed, all that kind of stuff. Um, Again, a lot of that was just unnecessary. It was brief and completely unnecessary. And once again, just Italian filmmaking. Let's go. <laughs> oh. Well, we're, we're getting down to the wire here. I, I wonder, uh, can we give this a uh, Pacheco score? Um, so if oh. you had to rate this film, yeah, let's get, what, mm-hmm. what do you like? What's the Pacheco score? Is it stars? Is it five of them? Is it 10 of them? What are we like? Uh, yeah, saints? Would- can we go? To, out of how many, you know, 10 saints? What's, what's your Pacheco rating for the St. Padre Pio film that has very little to do with St. Padre Pio? Yeah, on a scale of of legitimate John the 23rd to anti-Pope John the 23rd, this is an anti-Pope John the 23rd. <laughs> like, don't see this. But like I said, it's not even worth, it's not even worth the outrage, per se, which kind of breaks my heart because at least you want a movie to be interesting enough to stir you up. No, it's not a good film. It's not a good film. You've been bamboozled, Catholics. You've been bamboozled. Wow. I hope that Shia embraces the Catholic faith. I mean, it seems like he is, and God bless him on his journey, and I hope that he right. makes better St. Films in the future. I think he has the capability. But, you know, also, I was a little smart about this. I'll be honest. The first thing I did was look up what the director did previously, and I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to get it here, boys. And, uh, yeah, that uh, that helped me a lot because I was 
sounds like it's what do you think a film happen. like this costs? What was the budget on this film in your estimation? I mean, you could probably make this film for a couple million. Uh, most wow. of it is is most of it's just like locations in Italian villages, and there's not a ton of. I mean, it's really costing me, I'd say, but it's possible to get these locations. So it's it's definitely just like a like a low budget indie film, but it looks a couple good. million. Could have been I don't know, Jordan. I think we could do amazing things with a couple million. Uh, probably better All than right. the warmed over socialist leftovers with a dash of PO. But to Jordan Pacheco. Yep. I appreciate your take. You can't just blame me. I'm not seeing it. I have the opinion, but Jordan's seen it, and he still has the opinion. So there you go, folks. Hey, Jordan, if you want to hang out with us in the after show, rejoin at the top of the hour. But we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back, and then we're going to talk to the executive producer of a television series crowdfunded on the Crusades. Hmm. Coming up next. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and here are your headline news. Just the news reports households hearing on importance of AM radios in vehicles. The House Subcommittee on Communications and Technology held a hearing on Tuesday aimed at preserving AM broadcast radio in new vehicles free of charge. The hearing called Why Americans Value AM Radio comes in light of the bipartisan AM for Every Vehicle Act, which calls on the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to maintain AM radio as standard equipment that is required in vehicles going forward. Several automakers are beginning to phase out the system in their new car models. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle agreed with the importance of AM radio, including Florida Democrat Rep. Darren Soto, who called it the last line of defense for critical information. And Georgia Republican Rep. Buddy Carter, who was encouraged to see some automakers responding by keeping AM in their manufacturing plans. LifeSite News reports the WHO and EU announced partnership creating global system of digital vaccine passports. The World Health Organization and the European Union announced their collaboration on global digital vaccine passports at a joint press conference in Geneva on June 5th. The WHO has stated that they will use the EU digital COVID certificate as a model to establish a global digital health certificate. The EU digital COVID certificate made it so that EU citizens could only travel to other member states if they provided proof of vaccination, recovery, or recent negative COVID tests. In some EU countries, like Austria, citizens were essentially segregated from society if they refused to take the COVID injections. Trending Politics reports Christian American arrested for reading the Bible at Pennsylvania Pride event. Damon Atkins, a Christian, was arrested this past weekend during a Pride event in Reading, Pennsylvania, for reading the Bible out loud, causing significant controversy over First Amendment rights. In under a single minute of standing on the sidewalk, Atkins found himself in handcuffs. According to a court document obtained by the Lancaster Patriot, Atkins was charged with disorderly conduct engaged in fighting. It states that Atkins, despite being warned by the police moments earlier, shouted derogatory remarks at an organization holding a permitted event, exhibiting behavior that was threatening, violent, and tumultuous. Atkins is scheduled to appear in court on June the 16th and is hopeful that Alliance Defending Freedom will provide legal representation for him. And those are your headline news. Golly gee whiz, if you can get uh, arrested for that... Where was the police of that lady shouting us down, Paul? Remember that at the uh, men's march on uh, Saturday? Boy, was she, let's just say she was a peach. Nonetheless, uh, I want to give a special shout out to all of our iCatholic Radio listeners today. Praise be to God. You're part of the 300 Club. We love having you on the team. Thank you for doing it. The iCatholic Radio, 24-7, clear as crystal Catholic Radio, right in your pocket on your cell phone. Get the podcast of this show and all of our programming as well as the live video feed there and so much more. Download the iCatholic Radio app in your mobile iOS or Android app store today. Be a part of the team. Austin Kelly, executive producer of the Knights of the Cross TV series, is joining us. Did you even know that there was a crowd-funded television series on the real history of the Crusades? Yeah, mind blown, right? So let me just play a little clip here for you. This is a part of the first episode. Come, my lady. We must pray. Father, I 
repent of my sins, but most of all my doubt in your will. Father, if you love my brother as much as I, please heal him, that he may fulfill this mission ye have bestowed upon him. This episode is about Richard the Lionheart, who has gone to fight in the Crusades, but he has not yet quite made it his mission in life. Austin <sighs> Kelly, executive producer, joins us now to talk about this. Austin Kelly, good morning to you. Thank you for your time. Good morning, Joe. Thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate uh, being able to talk about this. I'm a big fan. I've said it now many times. If I had George Soros kind of money, I would <laughs> leverage it by making films because it moves the needles uh, in the hearts and minds of countless millions of people. If you can make high quality, beautiful uh, stories that grip people, take them on a wild ride, they will contemplate things that they would never contemplate if you just had a conversation with them. The power of media is very, very uh, impactful on society. And I was thinking that when I came across your television series, I've now watched this first episode, I don't know, four times at least. Uh, so hats off to you. I I'm just really proud of, of what you guys are doing here. And I want you to tell us the backstory. Who is the Christian Channel? What is the real history of Crusades? And why did you guys decide to put a television series together? Wow, uh, great introduction. Uh, the Christian Channel started around three years ago. Um, I'm originally from Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, what we had three years ago were the, um, you know, the, the vandals uh, destroying the Catholic faith. And I completely agree with you. I think media is the best way. Quality media is the best way to move our culture uh, to um, to really understand our faith. Um, and I think uh, with this show, you know, three years ago, I reached out to Jay Stephen Roberts uh, from the Real Crusades History. He has the largest YouTube channel on the Crusades, about over two hundred and seventy five thousand subscribers. Uh, a few weeks ago or months ago, we were at the History Channel. Uh, we just finished a, a show about the Knights Templar. So, um, you know, we're getting little exposure here and there. But this project started three years ago to produce a show about the Crusades because, you know, we want to fight for our faith and we want to tell the truth about the Crusades. It's more complex uh, than than most people perceive it to be. And uh, really, it's about men fighting for their faith. So I'm just really happy. You know, we've been here doing this for about three years and um, we're almost done. You know, our final episode is episode two, which we're currently crowdfunding on Knights of the Cross.com. We're almost halfway there. Um, and, you know, if you contribute over a thousand dollars, you get to join us on the movie studio set uh, in San Diego and get to hang out with the cast and crew. So it's a it's a large project, but um, thank you so much for for uh, showcasing the work and um, three years in the making and, you know, uh, one more episode to go and then we get distribution and, you know, all the big streamers get the get the stream it on there. So the goal is to to get millions of people to understand the Crusades, to understand the purgatory and um, and our faith. Yeah, that's the part that I really thought it was beautiful. There was some excellent scenes in there about this vision that Richard the Lionheart seems to have while on crusade. And it was beautiful. I mean, it really was a depiction of our lady there. Now I got to tell you, Austin, uh, I'm a connoisseur of content, right? So I, I take it all in, but I have been very critical of a uh, series like chosen because of their depiction of our lady. I can take bad depictions of our Lord. I cannot take a bad depiction of our lady. That is my triggering thing. So, and I saw the beautiful image of our lady in, in your, in your, in your television show here. And I thought that is gorgeous. That is really beautiful. The whole scene there was very well done. So I just wanted to also say thank you for doing that. How hard is it to put, a, put on a show like this? Uh, what does it take? What is production like here? What, how long does it take in, in filming and post-production? What is that process like? Wow, great question. So uh, really it comes down to the budget. Uh, so we had a very minor budget for episode one. Uh, typically you're looking at about $80,000 in a movie studio set, about three to four day production. Um, first, you would have to script the episode. You would have your treatment. You would uh, then hire your cast and crew. So the good news is a lot of the hard work's done. We have a great cast. Uh, episode two is what we're currently crowdfunding. And, uh, you know, 
this is where we introduce a saint. We introduce St. Simon Stock. And if you know Catholic history, um, you know that St. Simon Stock had the apparition of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. So that spoiler alert, that's the Easter egg at the end of the episode is that apparition. Uh, we wanted to uh, click uh, episode one with purgatory and then episode two with um, St. Simon Stock receiving the scapular. So episode two is titled The Battle of Jaffa. And um, it is not a very it's not a cheap production. It's a full on battle between Richard the Lionheart and uh, Saladin, uh, who is. Um, yes, it was uh, it's it's one of the greatest battles in Christian history, even in, in the Muslim world. Uh, Saladin was real, well respected, but he had a, his his brother Al Adil um, had a great respect for Richard the Lionheart. Um, so. The story is very complex, uh, even within the Christian world. You know, Richard, uh, you know, went on crusade with uh, with the king of France. He was backstabbed by his brother, John. So the story takes place where Richard is on his way home to resolve the uh, the uh, the kingdom of England uh, because his brother, John, you know, uh, was doing some bad stuff over there. That's where you get the story of Robin Hood. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an exciting tale and we want to, we want to do it right. So, um, how you could contribute to the show is go to knights of the And, um, if you want to join us on the movie set and you're, you know, uh, a young man or a, you know, a middle-aged man <laughs> on the set, you know, we'll put you in a costume and, uh, get you a sword and get to hang out Ooh. with the cast and crew. Boy, that's tempting right there. Uh, Oh, let's talk about the cast and crew. Tell us where did you find your actors? Can you give us some background information? Are these are these Catholics, Christians that are faithful? Do they just beloved crusade history? Who are these people? Yeah, so um, we filmed episode one in Salt Lake City. Most of the cast and crew came from The Chosen. So a lot of, the, a lot of our makeup artists came from The Chosen. Uh, our director came from Angel Studios. Uh, so we used a lot of uh, Mormon cast members, but the advisors and executive producers on the show, myself and uh, Brett Uberty, we, we are devout Catholics, um, you know, and we actually had a traditional uh, Latin mass priest on set advising us uh, throughout the whole production. His name is Father Gray in Park City, Utah, and he actually is the priest giving communion um, in the uh the dream sequence that we have when Richard uh, is in the cathedral. How much history is here versus creative license in trying to tell a story in the film? Well, uh, the, the, the hallucination scene was real. I would say it's, it's roughly 80, 80, 20, uh, 80% of it's, uh, it's, it's historic, but 20% we had some creative license uh, to, to have the purgatory scene um, in the show. Wow. And so the, 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 the script writer, the screenwriter here, tell us about who this person is, what motivates them and, uh, what, you know, sort of their approach to this process. Sure. Uh, that is uh, J. Stephen Roberts from the Real Crusades history. Um, that was our original goal was to produce high quality uh, Christian content. You know, he's he's the guy that uh, he, he is the ultimate historian when it comes to crusade history. And this this is why we wanted to work together with him, not only for his fan base, but he's also extremely knowledgeable in the Crusades. Wow. You know, uh, again, I just thought, what a great opportunity to do something interesting, especially on a subject like the Crusades, because I think, as you pointed out at the beginning of our conversation, it's one of those misconceptions. It gets taken out of context all the time. People think that uh, evil Christians were just simply murdering innocent people. Uh, Muslims in the Holy Land for for no other apparent reason other than greed and and uh, and whatever and the actual truth of that is somewhat different. It's a very complicated matter, and uh, I thought this was a, a wonderful opportunity to sort of retell that story in a much more accurate way, and that to do so with drama, with with acting, with uh, you know special effects. Obviously, battle scenes that can't be easy to pull off on a small budget, is it? Uh, no, it's not. But, you know, with the help of uh, generous contributors, uh, we can make it happen. So um, if you want to contribute to this Catholic TV show, go to knightsofthecross.com, select a pledge and contribute today. 
All right, Austin Kelly is our guest. We have to go to a quick break here. We're having a conversation about you know, media, about making films, about telling stories in dramatic ways that can do powerful things in society. And uh, we're talking about this series on the Knights of the Cross. We're going to have more conversation about that. I want to talk about distribution on the other side of this break. All of that and more of A Catholic Take is headed your way. But I would be grateful to you if... You can share us with a friend. Now, we're going to post links to everything we're talking about today in our show notes at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. That's thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hear what listeners are saying about the free iCatholic Radio mobile app. Through the iCatholic Radio app, I have listened to the sermons and teachings several times. The effect has been a deeper understanding of my faith and Catholic tradition. This app has truly been a blessing in my life and has increased my faith. Listen live or at your convenience to your favorite shows. Just search for iCatholic Radio in your app store today. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll say goodbye to the radio side of our audience and we'll say hello to our insiders in the after show. We stay live on the video stream for another half hour. Where we conversate directly with you about whatever it is you want to talk about. You get to drive that conversation. And if you fail to do so, well, then I just talk about movies mostly and sometimes food. And then I abuse Polish names. But nonetheless, you get to drive it and you can do that. Hanging out with us at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. You can see the live video feed there. You can see the links where you can click on and comment. But the insider group where the telegram is, that is where the magic happens. And you can join that by joining our insider list at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. Austin Kelly is the executive producer of a series of programs called the uh, the Knights of the Cross. And they've got the first episode out, and the second episode is being crowdfunded right now. And you can contribute to that. Uh, Knightsofthecross.com is the website. We'll post a link to that in our show notes as well. Austin, welcome back to the show. Let me ask you, how? What is like the, what's the plan here? How many episodes are you planning out? Are you planning multiple seasons? How many episodes per season? What does that look like? Uh, great question, Joe. Uh, this is going to be our final episode for the Knights of the Cross, a TV series. We wanted to uh, produce a mini series. Uh, we have tentatively agreed on uh, AVOD distribution. So after the series is over, we, we have distribution. Let me read off the distributors. We have Hulu, Comcast, Roku, Redbox, Pluto TV, Prime Video, uh, Tubi, and uh, Xbox, and Dolby Vision Atoms. Uh, that's what we tentatively agreed on. Um, it's pretty a standard distribution model uh, from a f- few independent distributors, but it's an AVOD. So everything right now, uh, you know, you could also stream it on the Christian channel. We are a subscription movie Catholic TV series service. Sorry. Um, Knights of the Cross was our original uh, pilot to kind of get the crowd excited about Catholic TV and media. Uh, this year, we're kind of going uh, independent, making independent documentaries. We just came out with the Mother Teresa documentary, uh, and then we have a Blessed Miguel Pro documentary coming out next week. So, um, you know, in the distribution world, uh, we we got some excitement from uh, from one distributor who will get us on Hulu, and um, that's where we we see the home of Knights of the Cross. Uh, to get massive uh, engagement. And hopefully, you know, it, the story uh, continues with season two if more excitement is uh, behind it. Oh, praise be to God. So if it, things take off, you will you will keep going. That's good to know. So, all right, let me ask you. Distribution, I think, is a really tricky subject. Um, most, most Catholics aren't filmmakers, so they don't understand how it all works. I've had some experience in it, so I get a taste of it. And I think there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, a cost benefit analysis here. On one hand, it's good to be on platforms that are ubiquitously available. We're all used to having them, right? We just pick up our phone and we can choose a movie and start watching it. That That's an advantage for sure. People are used to that. They would expect that. That's great. The downside is your movie could be buried in a catalog, in a sea, in an ocean of content available. 
and they may never see the light of it. Do you, what, what was that like in making those decisions? I mean, do you think that you might, your risk giving up too much control or uh, the rights to distribution in foreign parts of the world or anything like that, that you think you're a little more nervous about that people may not see that? Or do you think that is the best uh, solution for indie filmmakers, people who are trying to do special things, especially with content like yours? Well, I think the goal is to catechize the world about the Catholic faith. And so we want to be everywhere. Um, you know, we we don't think we're going to get buried just by the um, by the uh, the aggregation of the content. Uh, so every time you Google Crusades or you Google, um, you know, the real Crusades history, because we have the the writer, uh, it's going to pop up on the on the search engine. So we don't feel that we'll be buried, but um, our distribution is is going to it's going to be pretty aggressive and we'll we'll do some press around it. But, you know, originally we wanted to make this, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a movie, you know, because a theatrical movie. But, uh, you know, the budget, we didn't have the budget for it. And we met with popular uh, independent, you know, uh, movie ticket distributors like Fathom. And we had some conversations with them. Um, so it's still on the cards. It just depends how much, uh, you know, how much of an audience we build around the show. So um, yeah. as of right now, it seems like the home will be Hulu. If you can have anything uh, moving forward, like over the next 10 years, how do you see and what would you like to see change when it comes to creating content like this? And then being able to distribute it to a massive audience. Would there be anything that you, if you could control anything in the world, that you would change personally? And what would that be? If, you know, it, the, the market's always changing. So right now, ChristianChannel.com is an SVOD, right? So right now you have to pay $5 a month to, to stream hundreds of Christian movies. Um, but, you know talking to other uh, streamers and, and owners and tech uh, platform uh, developers, you know, it's, it's not very profitable. So right now we're going through a bit of a sea shift in the, in the streaming world where everything's going to AVOD. AVOD is when you see commercials, kind of traditional media that you used to have in the 90s when you used to watch Nickelodeon or other popular cable channels. So uh, right now we're, we're going to focus on uh, going on AVOD just to get the wide reach and hopefully monetizing and getting a, a, a fan base to, to, to like and watch the show. So we really need to find a way in the next decade or so. It's some, we have, the thing we have to improve is making it possible for Catholics to make a living doing this so that they can make quality product and focus and have the resources necessary to, put, to tell great stories. Agreed. And as of right now, the only way to do it uh, is through crowdsourcing. So you have popular projects like the Jim Caviezel Sound of Freedom. They're doing the pre-sale tickets. Unfortunately, that's that's how we're going to have to do it is is doing independent press and um, going on podcasts and getting the word out there about Christian media projects. I mean, uh, the Chosen raised ten million dollars to produce their series. I think it's like eight eight seasons. Um, for us, you know, uh, we we've only raised less than a hundred thousand. So we're doing the best we can with what resources we have. Um, and also, like, if you want us to make this show more epic, I mean, you know, the more money we get, the the cooler it's going to look. So it's, yeah, it like just that. depends on the budget. <laughs> The cool factor is dependent upon the budget. And that's so true. I mean, filmmaking is not an inexpensive endeavor, especially if you want to do it well. So right now over at the Knights of the Cross dot com, again, is their website where they're crowdsourcing this. If you want to participate in the next film, which is based on Simon Stock. Great story. Simon Stock living in a tree until his bishop sent him, uh, you know, on a mission. Great story. So that'll be a beautiful thing to see that depicted on the screen for sure. So at, like is it just you're going to it's when you hit a goal, then you'll move into production or are, is, are we on a clock here? Is there a timeline with which we have to hit this? What does that look like? Yeah, we and for we have to hit the, the goal by August 31st. Uh, so this is the last, you know, crusade for us crowdfunding the show, you know. So we really need your support. We really need more Catholics to support this project and um you know, it, it's. It, I think it's real. I think it's realistic. We could probably hit the goal. The goal is fifty thousand right now. We're at like twenty three, 
thousand. So um, we the cool thing is we actually reserved a ship in San Diego um, called the San Salvador ship. And so when you uh, donate a thousand dollars, you get to be in San Diego uh, dressed up in your crusader gear and join Whoa. Richard the Lion on his crusade. Sounds exciting. Praise be to God. Austin Kelly, grateful for your time today. Thanks for sharing this project. I'm going to be praying for your success and uh, and look forward to seeing episode two for sure. We're going to post a link to the thenightsofthecross.com as well as the actual first episode and a bunch of other stuff in our show notes over at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. Austin Kelly, God bless you. God love you. And uh, again, thanks for being on with us today. God bless. Take care, Joe. All right. Praise be to God. That's uh, knightsofthecross.com. Check it out. Share that with a friend. That'd be pretty amazing. Hey, we're going to say goodbye for today on the radio side. We'll stay on the we'll stay on the the after show. So if you want to join us, just make sure you're on the live video link, which you can do over at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. God love you. We'll see you tomorrow.